News. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thank you for joining me on Wednesday, April 21st, 2010. We have news for you from France where they're banning Muslim headscarves. We'll tell you about it. Also today we have news for you of Saddam Hussein's daughter. This could be curtains for her. She is no shrinking violet. Also today we have news for you on prostate cancer. This is very important. Also news for you, another Ponzi scheme. This one's in Miami Beach, Florida, and it's a lot of money. From Minnesota, we have news of a little boy who almost got hit by the laptop that fell from the sky. Wait till you hear where it came from. Also, we have news for you at Target where he is shaking his booty and now he's in jail for it. And then we have news for you from the city of Miami with a curfew. And then finally today, new you're not going to believe the vibrating story I have to tell you. Stay tuned. We'll be right back right after this. In America, half a million businesses are started each year. What does it take to launch a successful company? Discover the answers as entrepreneur Michael Vadini interviews the area's premier business leaders. There's no better time right now for anyone to start a business. Success is opportunity, timing, luck. I knew that it was going to take a lot of hard work. It's all about leadership. That's where it starts. Join us for American Entrepreneur. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thank you for joining me for your news for today. We're going to begin in international news over in France where French President Nicolas Sarkozy has ordered legislation that will ban women from wearing Islamic veils that hide the face and they can't wear, they won't be able to wear them in the street or in any other public place. It is similar to one a move in Belgium, which is also moving toward a total and complete ban. As for France, Sarkozy has repeatedly said that such clothing oppresses women and is simply not welcome in France. Uh, France has Western Europe's largest Muslim population, estimated at about 5 million. Apparently, Muslim leaders, for their part, Muslim leaders in France, they say that the face covering veil is not a religious requirement for Islam, but they do caution against banning it. You remember that France did outlaw the Muslim headscarves and other ostentatious religious symbols from classrooms amidst much controversy in 2004, but they did pass that law. In other international news, this could be curtains for Saddam Hussein's daughter. Her name, of course, Ragad Hussein. Interpol, as we told you a couple of weeks ago, has revised her arrest warrant and stepped up the fact that they walk her behind bars. She is currently living in Amman, Jordan, under the protection of King Abdullah II. But Interpol has apparently stepped up the hunt for her and her arrest because they say they have evidence directly linking the 42-year-old to terror bombings that were meant to disrupt Iraq's uh, elections last month, uh, saying she was in direct contact and direct communication with a key terror leader and she advised him on plans. This is very serious for her because in order for her to be in Jordan, she has to stay out of politics in return for her protection. So this could cause Jordan to kick her out. Ragat and her three sons and two daughters, just so you know, they live in a plush villa in Jordan. Not too far from the American Embassy. She's under 24 hour protection of, by the King's security forces. And let me tell you, this is no shrinking violet. I am not kidding. We should tell you this, her husband was a high profile Iraqi defector, you may remember this. He shared weapons secrets with coalition allies and with the UN weapons inspection team after he defected. He was convinced to return home. Authorities say Ragab was the one who convinced him to come home. The minute he got there, he was divorced from her and three days later he was murdered. In health news, U.S. researchers, cancer researchers, they say an experimental drug is looking good in treating an aggressive form of prostate cancer. The drug is MDV3100. It is safe and effective, they say, for patients with castration-resistant prostate cancer. Ugh, that's a tough one. Such cancers are known for their poor prognosis and limited treatment options. You'll find the study online at The Lancet. Now, please share this information with any man you know over 40. Quickly get it to him. In business news, U.S. regulators have charged a Miami Beach, Florida philanthropist with fraud. Authorities say Nevin Shapiro ran a $900 million Ponzi scheme. I wonder how much of that money ended up in the hands of charity. That is the word from the Securities and Exchange Commission. It says Shapiro's company, Capital Investments USA, sold investors securities that he claimed would fund the firm's uh, grocery business, but instead he used the funds from new investors to pay old investors. So that, of course, is uh, not to pay off the principal. The SEC says Shapiro used at least $38 million of investor funds to finance other business activities and, of course, his lavish lifestyle, which, of course, includes his $5 million house and his expensive clothing. Gee, thanks. They are, like, so psychopathic. It's terrible. Then from St. Cloud, Minnesota, on the lighter side, although it's not so light if you were the person on the other end of this laptop, 
The family of a Minnesota 10-year-old boy says they were at a cookout when they heard something crash to the ground that sounded like a gunshot. They looked down, turned out it was a laptop that had fallen from a medical helicopter overhead. From Oklahoma City, police there arrested a man who allegedly exposed his butt, like you want to see your butt, to shoppers in two Target stores in the same day. One woman saying the man was shaking his booty in the garden aisle of Target, and that's where she saw it. He's been picked up by cops. His name is Sean Andrew McClendon. He's 33. He's from Shawnee out in Oklahoma, the Oklahoma City area. From Miami, the city of Miami says it'll begin enforcement next month of that 1994 ordinance that established a curfew for teens 17 and under. The measure prohibits teenagers from being out in public after 11 o'clock during the week and after midnight on Friday and Saturday. If you're a parent and your child is cited four or five times for this, you're going to get yourself a fine of $500. So get your kids in check. And then this is crazy. This is so crazy from South Lake Tahoe, California. The California Highway Patrol said one of its offices was evacuated due to a suspect, suspected bomb in a man's anal cavity. I'm not making this up. I'm not making this up. It turned out to be a vibrator. I'm not making this up, okay? Investigators said the man who was 60, oh yeah, he stopped in a no parking zone near the Luther Pass, if you know where that is, up there near Lake Tahoe. Near the Luther Pass, when an officer found him to be in possession of a substance uh, suspected to be methamphetamine. Officers at the South Lake Tahoe area office discovered a suspicious wire with an on and off switch in the suspect's front left pocket. Yeah, in the suspect's front left pocket leading to his anal cavity. That's when the subject began to explain his knowledge of explosives and bomb making, I'll say, making officers very suspicious of this suspicious device. Well, the vibrator was subsequently removed from his anal cavity and placed into the property. The man was taken to jail. And no, I don't want to be a police officer. <laughs> no, thank you. Those are your stories. Thank you so much for joining me. Please share me with your friends. Please become my friend. Of course, please subscribe to me and pass it on. I'm Carol Angela Davis. Thanks for joining me. See you tomorrow.